Okay. All right. Should be live. We live? Yep. Everyone can hear me? Sorry for uh, running a little bit late here, but once again, welcome to Felix Comic Art Unboxing Art Show. This is episode 14. Uh, this is uh, what I call the ultimate art day experience. You get to see all this new art from the greatest artists working in modern comics. Alongside me, I've always said like, like the best part of this job, one of the best parts of this job, today will be the best part of the job, is uh, getting these packages in the mail and getting to open them up and seeing all this art for the first time. It is like uh, Christmas. I get to celebrate Christmas uh, more than once a year. And now you get to join me. Uh, yeah, sorry uh, for running a little bit late and sorry for this weird time, 2 p.m. on a Sunday. Uh, as you know, I do these when I can on the fly. I try to normally schedule these in the evening. Uh, I figure that's when people are mostly free, but this next month especially is gonna be really weird for me. Uh, my daughter's just got a ton of stuff going on. And um, yeah, I'm actually not sure when I'll be able to do this again. So this might be our last row off for a little bit. So if you're here, congrats. You get to see uh, you get to see all this today, and uh, it might be a little bit before I do it again. Uh, yeah, running a little little late, hit some traffic, but uh, had to grab myself a coffee. It's just been one of those weeks. I'm I'm dying here. Got myself a double espresso. Uh, let's see if it uh, carries me through this episode. All right, who have we got in the room? Um. Yams uh, gave everyone a heads up. I'll be a couple minutes late. Thanks for that, Yams. We got DC Patrol, Copy H, Ian Saint, Kelsey Steen, Victor Bracamontes, JKZA, who's our buddy Jason K. Uh, Marcus Way, of course, Mark V, Mike Sitchi, Marvin Alua, Nick Patera, artist Nick Patera, the very, uh, the suddenly very hot, in a, it kind of snuck up on everyone, uh, Nick Patera. Thanks to his project, Axe Wilder John. I'm sure he'll have more to announce with that soon, but uh, people are very excited about that. Um, we got uh, Mark V again, Tyler T, M, L, Stacey DeLong, Shaheen, Chandra Soma, Grant Riddle. Uh, don't you guys have anything to do on a Sunday afternoon? I'm, I'm surprised there's so many of you here, uh, but thanks. Uh, Grant Riddle, Stacey Peralta, Stacey Peralta of uh, Lords of Dogtown fame, very famous. Uh, <laughs> Uh, skateboard documentary. Welcome, Stacy. Uh, skateboard and and, and uh, documentary legend in the house. Uh, John Gardner, Paul Berzagawi, Don Bergenda, David Ascani Son, Chuck Arnold, Hero Squared, One J P, Drew Rosen, Richard Mont, James Miller. Uh, guys, uh, let's let's get this show. Go on, shall we? All right, first off, I'm going to show you what the prizes are this week for people who guessed correctly. You're not going to believe it. Amazing prize this week. Of course, your Felix Comic Art mask. Greatest prize ever. Am I right, guys? I can feel the excitement. Uh, I got six of them here, and actually, I've got like 200 of them at home. I ordered a ton of these uh, because it's going to be con season this year, planning on... Uh, giving them out to, to friends and fellow collectors, and uh, they just got rid of the mask mandate. So I don't think these are uh, gonna be quite as useful as they were a week ago. But whatever, it's official Felix Comic Art swag, merch, or whatever the term is. Uh, there are only so many of these, so it's still pretty cool. Uh, we'll be having t-shirts though for con season. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a couple of years since we did to have done new t-shirts. And uh, I think we have like six or seven styles that we've done. Uh, anybody in the audience have a complete set? Well, it's not really a complete set unless you also have the mask. So yeah, let's see who let's see who wins. Let's see who wins. We have six of them here, fresh, brand new, triple quilted. Keeps out uh, at least fifty percent of the germs. All right, let's go. Uh, if you uh, pay attention to my social media, you follow me on Instagram which is uh, probably my platform of choice, or, uh, or Twitter, which is not so much, or Facebook, which I absolutely hate. Um, then you saw the sneak peek pick. I've got six boxes this week. Three of them are big, uh, what we like to call wall power. 
And let's start off with the first one. Let's start off with the first one. Check this, check this bad boy out. Let's see, we got any guesses? We got Chris Stevens, guess number one. By Marty. Anyone else? This, this, this really ought to be a gimme. Uh, Pope from DC Patrol, Bertram from Richard Mountfort, Bergara from Riddle, Tyler T with Pope. Tyler T, you were number two, DC Patrol, number one. Yeah, if it's big, it's pretty much only going to be uh, one or two guys. So this is indeed, well, you know what? This is, this is Paul Pope art, but it's not from Paul Pope. And I'll explain that in a second. When you see it. So I guess technically, sorry, DC Patrol, I'm taking it back. You did not win. You do not get a official comic art mask. No, I'm just kidding. I'll send one to you. So it is Paul Pope art, but he is not the one who sent it. Um, I don't know, how do you, how do you uh, let me get a ruling from the judge. Does that count? He gets Pope, but it's not from Pope. It is Pope art though. Judge, uh, what do you say? What do you pretty say? Pretty close. Pretty close, huh? Yeah, I'd say that. I, that's hard to guess that. Yeah, well, I'm, I, I have ultimate veto power. It doesn't really matter what you say. All right. <laughs> All right. Get vetoed. We got uh, we got a package here. This is a uh, this is an envelope. So I'm going to tell you where this came from, guys. This is Paul Pope art, and it came from a gallery in France. Uh, Paul had a show back around uh, 2015, 2016, right before I started repping him. He had a gallery show out in France, and uh, he took the art over himself. It was a little too much to ship, and the plan was he would go back and pick it up himself. Well, it's been six years, and that hasn't happened yet. Um, well, one reason is because of the pandemic. And he's not sure when he'll be able to go back. He doesn't really want them to send it all back at once, because again, it's a lot of art. Uh, but we needed him to send this back. If it's what I think it is, what I hope it is, let's take a look. Wow, it's got uh, wrapped in paper, very nice. The packaging itself is uh, it's not, it's sufficient. I'm not gonna say it's great, I'm not gonna say it's terrible. It's sufficient, but we're not grading the gallery. So let's say, uh, what do we call that? Uh, NA, not applicable. A look at this art. It's wrapped very nicely, though. Very prestigious gallery. Back. This is. Uh, we're gonna get this in order. This is a four-page story titled "1977." And it is a uh, bit of an autobiographical uh, story. You can see there's a, uh, let's see, let me get this in the frame. Um, there's a little kid here uh, playing records, if you remember those, playing his vinyls on a record player. He's got his headset on, and of course he's got his uh, Micronaut toys. And who else would that be but uh, uh, Paul Pope as a child. And um, yeah, this was a very uh, important story to him. Um, he told me about it. Uh, it was uh, sort of a tribute to his his mom, who introduced him to this music. You can see that there's a Doors album there. And um, anyway, if uh, if you are around our age, 1977 was a really big year, very memorable year. Uh, so this is a four page story that Paul had. Um, exhibited at the show, wasn't planning on selling it, except uh, someone wrote us with an offer. And um, Paul Paul decided to let it go. And it's all here. Hey mom, is Ziggy Stardust really a man from Mars? Of course, referring to the David Bowie album. No, honey, he's a man from London. His real name is David Bowie. Well, it's David Jones, actually. David Bowie's a stage name. So it's like he's playing a character in a movie or a play. Oh, that's what I thought. And that's it. That's the, uh, uh, you know, it's a beautiful little story. Um, this was chosen by Alison Bechtel. Uh, 
to be a part of the Best American Comics Anthology. I think it was the uh, 2013 edition. I don't know if you guys uh, ever ever get that, but you can you can pick it up. Uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, treasures in there like this, and uh, this was voted um, or selected as one of the best comics uh, of the year, Best American Comics. That year was edited by Allison Bechtel. Okay, congratulations to the uh, collector who got this. You did not know it was in France. Well, frankly, neither did I, uh, but Paul did, and he got his uh, friend out there to, to send it to us, and here it is. So this deal is done. Congratulations. Now, um, we just did a drop for Paul Pope uh, on Friday a couple days ago. 36 pieces, uh, all 36 sold out. Thank you to everyone who checked in on the drop. Uh, I added three pieces after the fact, just for uh, archival purposes, add the scans to the site so people could still enjoy them. And if you watched previous unboxing show, then uh, you saw a incredible Batman Year 100 page and two incredible 100% pages. And so I was getting um, some some emails saying, hey, uh, were these in, in the drop? I didn't notice them. No, not. Uh, those were sold privately. And so I guess I will explain to everyone now, everyone who's here, uh, why that happened. So as you all know, we do not pre-sell individual pages, like from uh, an issue. We're not gonna break up an issue, let anyone cherry pick the issue. We just drop it all at once, give everyone a chance. Uh, an exception would be if there are like single one-off pieces, you know, our preference is to drop it, but if someone wants to make an offer, we'll listen. Um, I will uh, clarify that by saying it has to be a crazy, stupid, preposterous, uh, insane number. Uh, do not just offer us FMV or fair market value uh, because there's no point to that. We'll just drop it. Um, it has to be well beyond fair market value, a number that I would not advise uh, anyone offer uh, but if you're going to be crazy, insist on being crazy, I'm not going to stop you. And in the case of the uh, Batman Euro 100 and the 100% pages, you know, people were making crazy offers and um, Paul couldn't turn it down. And so uh, he accepted it. And so those were sold privately. Um, that's the situation there. Uh, anything you see during this unboxing show, if you are so moved to make a uh, uh, a ridiculous offer, uh, you're welcome to. As one collector to another, I don't advise that. Um, I would say just wait for the drop uh, and just know that uh, the number has to be uh, so tilted in the artist's favor as to be, uh, re you know, just just, just insane. Um, if you understand that, okay, just, just, you know, come in with your eyes open. All right, let's see what, uh, what you guys got to say about that. Um, Any latecomers to the to the to the live stream? Ryan Peters, how you doing, Ryan? DC Patrol says collector's items. Yes, congratulations, DC Patrol. You got a collector's item. Klaus von Devin says just for the sake of framing. I don't know if he means framing the mask, but why not? I'll and I'll sign it for you if you if you want no extra charge. Stay still on says are the masks remarked? No, they're not remarked, but uh, I can sign them. And again, no extra charge for winners. Kevin Godfrey, welcome, Kevin. He's watching at work on his phone. Good for you. Not a way to do it. A lot of guesses on the art, but uh, two people guessed Pope. Good job. Klaus Bondovan asks, hey, guys, what do we wish to see today? I would love to see some Bertram, DWJ, or Andrade. Klaus, you, you know, you may... There may be things you'd like to see, but I'm going to tell you, whatever you do see is going to be pretty fucking awesome. doesn't even really matter who it's from. doesn't have to be uh, those three, but I understand they may be your favorite. Schizoid is here. Mike D. How you doing, Mike D? I wonder if it's the uh, longtime collector of Mike D. Uh, Scott Wingo. Happy weekend, everyone. Happy weekend to you, Scott. Uh, the fam like uh, mostly I expect the single guys to show up if at all. Um, the family guys are always a little tricky on the weekend, 
but Scott clearly is uh, is his own man. Either that or he's uh, he's not much of a family man. But anyway, welcome, Scott. Uh, title of the video has a has a uh, typo. Yes, Felix Coic art, not Felix Comic art in the title. Um, yeah, that's that 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 happens on occasion. Good job, Judge. Thanks for pointing that out, Scott. Mike says, wear them white gloves. These hands are pristine. These hands are, are, are so clean. Don't even worry about it. Okay, on to our next box, guys. I'm gonna put this right here, okay? Yeah, okay, it's right here. <clears throat> All right, uh, here we have your basic uh, brown FedEx box, the kind of box that fits 11 by 17 art. You know the one I'm talking about. Let's go. Who's gonna get? Who's gonna win the next mask? Benno Rothschild. Hey, Benno. Grant Riddle, Bergara, Drew Rosen. Hey, Drew. Jeffrey Allen Love, Scott Wingo, Stegman, Victor Bracamonte, Stephen Green. Wow. Within let's see, one, two, three, fourth guest got Stephen Green. It's Stephen Green. Good job. We got uh, Bergara, Rossman, Andrade, Stephen Stegman, DWJ, Andrade, Otley, Chang, Conley, Vilquis, Rossman. No, it is Stephen Green. Guess correctly by Victor Bracamontes. Victor Bracamontes, how did you guess that so fast? Although, you know, I know I know one strategy some of you guys are doing. Just, just keep guessing the same names over and over again, and eventually you'll be right. The trick is, though, you have to you have to beat someone else who may have the same guess or is, or is guessing the same name. Okay. Here's a tab, actually. It's a little bit open from this end. How much pleasure are you guys getting from the ASMR here? Like there's like good scratchy sounds. Like, how's that? Do a little tapping for you. I know a little too much about ASMR. Here we go. Courage. Let's see what Steve, let's see what, what old Stephen Green included in this package. Stephen Green, who, uh, who's really with us, thanks to Nick Patera. Nick Patera, I first discovered Stephen's art at Nick Patera's place, a story I've told before. Let's open this up. Not a, not a whole lot of art, as you can see. Should be pretty cool stuff. Grab the bag. See what we got here. Let's start off with this. This is a full size 11 by 17 commission. And this, this piece is great. You got uh, Archangel here. And uh, hey, hey, who's this? Who's, who's the girl? Uh, what's her name? Psylocke or something? I don't yeah. remember. Psylocke. Psylocke? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, uh, I know all about uh, comic book characters. Archangel Psylocke. How's that? 11 by 17. Oh, uh, here's one after my own heart. As you all know, I am a Watchman freak. And uh, we got, uh, got Dr. Manhattan and Captain Adam, the, the, uh, the Archie character, the Charlton character that uh, he was based on. That's really cool. And it looks like uh, Stephen drew the uh, little panties on Dr. Manhattan. Stephen is from the South, and they're a little conservative down there. But this is this is cool. As a Watchmen fan, uh, I approve. And it is a cool idea to incorporate Captain Adam into the piece too. Uh, not sure what this is. This is a, uh, I don't think it's a commission. As a matter of fact, I, th I think Steven wrote me a note a little bit ago. This might be a piece for a friend, but really cool design. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
Well, so what happens in the art unboxing stays in the art unboxing. And I'll also tell you that these pieces, I, I'm not 100% sure if they'll be available for sale just yet. Uh, Steven needs to get confirmation, but he was uh, hired to draw uh, a bunch of Star Wars art for an upcoming uh, upcoming product. I'm not gonna say what it is, uh, but, but Steven is, was uh, hired to do the art. This art may or may not uh, uh, be available, but we're gonna enjoy it now anyway. This of course is um, uh, Psylocke with the two lightsabers. What's the name of his character? Uh, ah Ahsoka Tano, Tano, that's it. <laughs> See, I knew. And uh, R2-D2 up here. Oh, this is cool. Uh, so one of the, one of the new style no, this is not a stormtrooper. This is uh, this is a Mando. This is a Mando of some sort. Oh yes, yes. This is um, uh, not Silac, but Jubilee with uh, two lightsabers. You guys know who it is. I, I, I don't know the new characters. I'm sorry. It's from Star Wars, though. This is cool. Looks like another Mando. Of course, here we have uh, uh, Count Dooku and the Emperor. How's that? Christopher Lee. That's what I remember. Christopher Lee. Count Dooku. So uh, one J P says Count Dooku, and it's spelled it D U K U. No, it's D O O K U. What's the matter with you? Don't you know your Star Wars? All right, we got uh, the uh, squid face guy here. He's a Jedi. Of course, Darth Maul. These are really cool. I'm really hoping these will become available. I'm with you guys. Uh, these are cool to see. Of course, we know who that is. Everyone knows who that is. I'm not even gonna say it. You know, it's if you don't, shame on you. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is my speed right here. Woohoo! Awesome. Okay, you got some. You guys got to see something maybe you weren't supposed to see, but this is okay to see. I'll leave it here. What have you guys got to say? Uh, so Victor guest Stephen Green, then we have um, Bergara, Rosmo, Andrade, Stephen Stegman, DWJ, Andrade, Otley, Chang, Conley, Bilquis, Rosmo. Yuko. No one else gets Stephen Green. So yeah, you really, you really won, Victor. Good job. Shannon Weather says Bilquis is an art goddess. She is. Amazing stuff. Her stuff is selling like crazy too. We haven't gotten anything from her a while, from her in a while. Hopefully we'll be getting some art from her soon, uh, including possibly Supergirl art. Um, we had issues one through five. Four of those sold complete. We broke one up and everything is all sold out. Um, don't know if I'm going to be getting any more of that art from her. It really depends on her, uh, but fingers crossed we will. Um, may sell complete, may break it up. You know, again, I, I don't know just yet. Victor Bracamonte says he mentioned he was trying to finish up his commissions. Yeah, it's been a busy time for, for Stephen, but he is working on the commissions. God, that Archangel is so good. Yeah, that Archangel is amazing, but what about that Psylocke? Uh, Marvin asks, don't remember, did Hellboy Forgotten Lives art sell complete? Yes, it did, Marvin. And if I show any complete issues in here that you're interested in, you got to write me because uh, since I started this unboxing show, uh, people have been jumping on the complete issues as I open up the packages. Asajj Ventress, of course. You didn't have to say, I knew who that was. Asajj Ventress, I, yeah. Dooku Ventress, lots of Clone Wars goodness. Yeah, it's totally. Kavi says, hope that mall ends up for sale. I hope it all ends up for sale, Kavi. James Miller, Dark Sister. Um, yeah, Dark Sister, sure. 
Grant says, uh, last issue of Supergirl was amazing. I still have to, I still have to read it, Grant. I have it, still have to read it. Joe Darrow says, we'd love to see anything from Cliff's Lonely City. Speaking of Cliff's Lonely City, he's Catwoman Lonely City. Uh, I just got to read issue three last night. I got to read the PDF of it and it, it just, the thing is amazing. It just gets better and better. Uh, that's the good news. So you're getting a great comic. Uh, the bad news, or not so bad, but kind of sad for art collectors, is uh, art's not going to be available. Sorry. Ron Lim, sorry I'm late. And Jersey Lambo. Yeah, welcome, guys. Brian Burns says, I just assume Felix knows who all the characters are. Very good, Brian. I do know. I, I know them all. If I don't say the character's name, it's only because... I don't want to, that's because I don't know. All right, guys, let's go on to our next box. Uh, well, let's see, Casey Andrade has feels. Have you seen the Batman yet? As a matter of fact, Casey, I did see it. I saw it with my good pal, Yams, Friday, first show, opening day on IMAX. IMAX, on IMAX here in San Francisco. Uh, it's actually the same theater where I saw Batman Begins. And it was it was very similar feeling, very exhilarating. Walked out of there happy. I'm not going to say it's a perfect movie, um, but uh, very glad I saw it. And I will be likely seeing it again. Okay, here's the box, and I'm not going to no spoilers. I'm going to give you guys all the chance to see it. We can talk about it uh, next time. But uh, the ca the the casting gamble for me paid off. DC Patrol, Riley Rossmo, Klein. Bergara, Rossman, Andrade, Immen, and uh, Stegman. Let's go. Ian Birch from DWJ. And the winner is Mike Cushion with Stuart Immen. This is Stuart Immen. Good job. Good job. Mike, let's see. You are one, two, three, fourth guess again. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Sixth guess. And you're not as impressive as Victor. Victor got it. Fourth guest, you're, you're number six, but still, good job. This is from Stuart Eminen, and this is going to be Magic Order Art. And speaking of, you know, issues that are selling complete, as I open them up on Unboxing Show, you know, probably uh, Exhibit A, even more so than uh, Bilquis Evely, or actually tied with Bilquis Evely, is, is this Magic Order Art. Um, we've got four issues so far. And all four have sold complete. This should be issue five. Issue four just came out. So issue five, obviously not out yet. So I can't really show you all the pages here. But again, if there's anyone who's interested in, and this is, this is, you know, it's got the job done. It's not super pretty, but got the job done. It was in the box, which is a good start. And then he reinforced it with his extra padding. So good job, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. We always, uh, even though it's a little bit of a pain to open, it's okay. Happy? Put myself to sleep. Uh, but we uh, we always appreciate this effort. Again, really no points for style, no major points for style. Just get it to us in, in good shape. This is, this is all wrapped up. Okay, I got to take a peek off screen here. All right, so the situation with Stewart's art is this. Uh, up until Magic Order, everything we've had from him is just the stuff from his archives. Older art, a lot of Marvel art, um, and pretty much sold all of it. I mean, we've had uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Star Wars, Captain America, X-Men, you know, all the big titles he's worked on. We've dropped what was available, and it's pretty much all sold out, it's like 90 5% sold out. Uh, Magic Order was the first new art we were going to have. And uh, planning on, on sort of making that his new art debut. But it's all been selling complete. So uh, we sort of tabled the... Uh, we sort of tabled the... Uh, uh, excuse me. The, 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 the vintage... Or, you know, the vintage art... Uh, to make room for the new art, but all the new art is is going complete, which is to say, uh, I'm talking to him about opening up the vaults again, 
so that we can have more imminent art on the site. So if you've been hoping for some older art, um, we should have some if, if all this magic border art sells complete. And uh, actually, this is issue six. So this is, uh, this is the big finale. I don't know if you guys are reading the comic, uh, but as usual, fun read. And as usual, Stuart is knocking it out of the park. Um, and all these pages are his pencils and inks, which is a bit of a rarity. Uh, he has worked with inkers, especially during the Marvel run. I mean, there's no other choice. The books are monthly. Um, he could take his time with this art. So this is just uh, incredible art. Uh, he did work with uh, absolutely amazing inker, uh, Wei Von Grabadger at Marvel. So that art is still gorgeous. Uh, but this is uh, imminent over imminent, which is a bit of a rarity. So that's the cover. You know, I'm, I'm going to see if there's something here I can also show off without uh, spoiling too much. Because, you know, they just in fairness to everyone, including the publisher, you know, we don't want to show everything, just give it all away. But let's see if I can show you guys something. This is, uh, this is a crazy issue. Yep, this is all climax. All right, uh, double page spread in here. That looks really cool, but I can't really show it. But here we, here we go. Here's a page because this is a setup page. But you can see they've summoned a demon, this, this uh, crazy tentacle creature. And that's one thing Stuart does amazingly well. Um, you know, his creature designs. So there you go. Let's see what you guys got to say. Uh, like button, the stick one. Uh, Shaheen asked, "Wasn't the plunge art new Eminem when you dropped it?" You know, Shaheen, that's a good. That's that's a good one. Uh, the you know, it. I guess close enough. Uh, the series was already done, so that was the newest art we had available, and that was actually our very first uh, Eminem drop. Uh, that was all pencil only art. And it's a little hard to, uh, you know, get it across via scan on your monitor, but it is gorgeous stuff. His, his pencils are both delicate and tight, pretty finished. And uh, yeah, that that uh, that art's that that art the art that we made available is is all sold. He still has uh, other pages from the series left, so that might be something we make available too. If there's any uh, interest in plunge art, speak up or write me. Uh, Chris Lutz said next wave. Yeah, next wave was very popular. We've had a lot of requests for next wave. He did have some next wave pages left and uh, someone came in, made an offer on all of them. Um, so it's not available to be dropped. I will tell you that the pages that were left, um, you know, there's nothing spectacular, um, but someone just wanted them all. So we, we, we sold them to that collector. It was a little while ago. DC Patrol says hit that like button. Yes, please, please do everyone. Please hit that like button because uh, it apparently is uh, good for, for the channel, and I appreciate it. A lot of people here on a Sunday afternoon. I really thought I'd be doing this with, like, uh, you know, three shut-ins, me and three shut-ins, but we got a, we got a pretty, pretty big room. Thanks for showing up, guys. And, uh, by the way, uh, is daytime better? Do you guys prefer daytime over evening? Let me know. You can sh shoot a comment in the chat or... Shoot me an email if you if there's a particular uh, time you guys like if you if you like weekends um, if you like day if you like evening let me know. Okay, let's go on to our next box. You know what, uh, Yams? Hmm. Let's make the next prize uh, extra interesting. All right. Yeah, go grab me. Go grab me that for Zeta. The other one, the different one. I can't remember which one we offered before. We have two. All right. This is this is going to be a uh, a special prize, guys. Boom. Frazetta. the return of Frazetta. Not the same Frazetta. We don't offer the same prizes twice. This is a new Frazetta. from his famous werewolf story. Published in Creepy. Check that out. It's a, it's an all original uh, collector's proof. Totally original collector's proof. 
Uh, so let's see who wins it. But you got you got to guess within. Th it has to be within the first three guesses. That's the caveat. If you get it right in the first three guesses, we'll go. Okay. You guys saw the prize. Let's see if anybody wins it. First three guesses. Here's the box. Just just your FedEx box. And we got uh, Bergara, Shimizu, Andrade. No, nope, nobody wins the Frazetta. But let's see if anybody else gets it. Gets the right guess. So, but sorry guys, nobody won the Frazetta. Nice try though. Wow. I mean, you know, a lot of the shows they uh, they're like uh, taking ideas and you know doing some of the things we do. Let's see. Let's see one of them. Offer a Frazetta, a real Frazetta, collector's proof. Uh, let's see, we got uh, DWJ, Bertram, uh, Riley Rossmo, Chang, O'Malley, Moore, Huddleston. No, you're all incorrect. You all got it wrong. Let's see who this is. You never would have got it. You never would have got it. That was that was maybe not so nice. Uh, but maybe someone would have got lucky. If you were paying attention to what I was saying about Stuart Eminen, Maybe you would have had a lucky guess because why? I brought up the name Wade Von Grawbadger. Inker Supreme Wade Von Grawbadger. And so Wade is so good. He works with only like these 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 uh these master level artists. These supreme technicians. And Stuart Eminent being one. And Ryan Sook being the other. Yeah, none of you guessed Sook either. I would not have accepted Sook because the package came from Wave Ump Grab Badger. And it is art from uh, Blue and Gold number six, which I believe is out. This is the Blue, Beater, Blue Beetle Booster Gold series that uh, Ryan Sook is doing with Dan Jurgens and Wade has inked this issue. And Sook is, Sook is one of the best. And like uh, Eminem, uh, Sook over Sook, you don't get too much of it. He's usually working with Wade. I mean, Wade is sort of the eager of choice. But, but Ryan, Ryan has been uh, uh, just, sort of under the radar doing amazing comics last 20 plus years and i think there's no doubt he's been underappreciated but yeah that's that's changing and it's going to change in a big big way in the next couple of years I, I can't say any more except that uh he's he is being tapped for some big projects on top of the uh amazing covers he does and he is he's a guy to me like uh jose garcia jose Lu luis garcia lopez who, who has just you know sort of quietly amassed an incredible body of work with uh with beautiful art but kind of in the shadow of the flashier guys and some of the guys with the higher profile or put themselves out there more i mean uh ryan has been just quietly plugging away very humble guy but if they if DC were to do a style guide today, uh, much like Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, uh, Ryan Sook, to me, would be the guy to do the DC style guide now. Very clean, classic look for all the characters. All right, a lot of guesses. Uh, yeah, nobody guessed uh, Wade Von Grabadgers. What a shame. That that uh, that one hundred percent original Frazetta collector's proof could have been yours. Uh, Jersey Lambo guessed suit, but was that had I opened the package? Had I said Wade Von Grabadger already? Be UT full DC Patrol. Yeah, DC Patrol is a DC guy. So DC Patrol, what do you think, Ryan Suk for the? for the new DC style guide. He's the man. All right, uh, I told you we would have uh, three 
giant boxes, wall power size. I think this is the most wall power we've ever had for one show. Uh, you, you saw one of them already. Let's go with number two. This is a mailbox assert. This is kind of a, you know, like that priority size box, but it's been built out. So it's really big. Very good. I imagine this is going to be a very creative packaging. Look, look, it's filling up the entire frame. Uh, we got Bertram Rosmo, Bertram Mooneyham, Andrade, Bergara. Uh, interesting guesses. Uh, and we got, let's see, within one, two, three, four, five. Within five guesses, Ben Lyons guessed Andrade. Ben, how did you guess Andrade? Is that just your go-to guess? And you hope you get it right. Um, yeah, thanks for zooming out there, Yams. Uh, it is it is Felipe Andrade, a very rare package from Felipe Andrade. I get art from Felipe maybe once a year. And here we go. Let's see what's in here. I have a feeling I know what's in here. But uh, it is Felipe Andrade. And, and this might be... I do, don't know that he was going to do anything big. I don't really... I really don't know why this package is as big as it is. But we're, we're about to find out together. This is, this is like uh, Geraldo Rivera opening up Al Capone's vault. Anybody old enough to remember that? But I, uh, hopefully this is a little bit better payoff than that. But we're going to find out together. Why is this package so big, Felipe? Mysterious. And I've been wondering that ever since I got this package. But I've been disciplined. I've sat on it. For you guys. We're going to find out together. King Tut's Tomb or Al Capone's Vault? What's it going to be? Obligatory uh, ASMR content there. Wow. Oh, boy. This is very interesting packing. Very interesting packing. Boy, if ever there was going to be a week where I cut myself, it's probably this would cause crazy packaging. Who's got the action on whether or not I uh, cut myself? You have a little faith. Look how, look how good I am with knife. Intricate. Maybe this, you know, he he only ships out once a year, but maybe this is why. This is crazy. It takes him takes him that long to pack this stuff. It took me about that long to open it. Oh shit! I'm just crossing my fingers to some of this. Oh. Yams yeah, is crossing his fingers for Layla Star, as I imagine many of you are. So the odds we get Layla Star in here. <laughs> Check this out. He sent it back in a. He, he he built that package around an old Felix comic art mailer, and he even packed the mailer in bubble wrap. I mean, this is again no points for style. I give this an A plus for this. This shit is bulletproof. Good job, Felipe. Doesn't have to be quite this insane, but good job. All right, so there's not really wall power in here, guys. It's just that he built the package up so big it was wall power size. I kind of don't even want to know what it cost him to ship, but anyway, got here. In great shape, no dings, nothing bent. Better safe than sorry. Don't be penny wise, pound foolish when it comes to shipping. You know, for art, pack it up real good and sturdy and ship it the fastest way possible. Just pay the, just pay the extra bucks. That's my advice. Yams is uh, in the background helping clean up this, uh, this mess. Okay, so inside the Felix comic art package, more bubble wrap. All taped, all this art is like super taped up. And I can tell that inside the art is, is now wrapped again in, uh, in tissue paper. Right. 
there any Layla Star art in here? I'm gonna save you guys the suspense. I would say almost certainly not. And the reason being that Felipe has not wanted to sell that art, he's wanted to keep it. Um, I will say, however, that uh, he may, because we talked about this, be letting some pieces go, um, just not immediately. So hang tight for that. And uh, just uh, if you're on our newsletter, if and when any of that art becomes available, I will let you all know. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to my newsletter, you really ought to be. All right. Um, so we did we did a commission list for Felipe uh, back in 2020. He's now done with it. And he's just like 30, 30 pieces on his list. He's done them all. You know, we take nice long lists. Um, and now he's done them all. They come in... Uh, Three sizes, we got nine by 12, we got 11 by 14, and we got 11 by 17. There's a bunch of them in here. Let's start off with the nine by 12, shall we? And if you were on the uh, Felipe commission list and you're watching this, well, you'll get to see your art. Ryan Sook's in the house. Huh? Ryan Sook's in the house. Ryan, Ryan's in the house. Ryan, our, our modern day Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Brian uh, Jose Luis Sook. Welcome. Okay. We have a piece of tissue here. Wow, everything is separate with tissue. So uh, Felipe was super careful with his art. He applied a fixative to it. Um, so we're going to just check it out. Wow, 9 by 12. Uh, that is, of course, our main man, Wolverine. And girl. Nine by 12, there's a lot of these in here. And he, he did all these commissions. Oh, here we go. I really love this one. This is... Of course, death from Sandman. Yeah, Felipe has really, really leveled up on his uh, art, like so many of our artists, like just about every artist. If you compare uh, what they did at the beginning when they joined us to where they're at now, it's a very natural evolution, and a lot of it is, you know, well, they're just constantly improving. But also, I, I truly believe that being a part of our group, they, they inspire each other. They, they, they prod each other to, to do their best stuff. Like nobody wants to be seen as the weak, weak link or, or, or not uh, measuring up. So what does that mean? That just means good news for collectors. That's magic for collectors. This is Adam Warlock. Outside package was a little fugly, but inside, inside is, is as good as it gets. A plus, Felipe. Great job. Uh, here we go. This is magic with horns. Scott Wingo says, hey, Ryan Sook, loving the Hulk run. Uh, it, don't worry, Scott. Uh, we got a lot of Ryans. It's okay. Ryan Sook, of course... Uh, corrected it's it's ryan otley don't worry scott we're not going to hold that against you we are going to uh we're not going to bust your balls the way your family is for skipping the skipping on them on a sunday afternoon but anyway oh this is this one i saw felipe post i really like this one this is a this is a this is a double character piece this is Black Bolt with Lockjaw.
A lot of lucky collectors. A lot of lucky patient collectors. Yeah, we took this list in 2020. It's now delivering it, you know, by 2022, but it's worth the wait. And because there's a question, I see uh, if, if Felipe is going to be taking uh, another list this year. I don't know. It really depends on the schedule. But you can't assume that these guys will be available every year because I don't. I don't know. I love them. I believe me. I love it if they were. But a lot of these guys, a lot of these lists are only once every you know few years. The, the Nick Klein list is is four years now. You know, and I, I it's not what we want. It's not ideal. But Thor happened, and so he just hasn't had time. Um, nobody's won it off. And I will tell you, if you stay on, you are getting the pre superstar Nick Klein rate. Uh, if and when he finishes that list and takes on a new one, you're going to be getting the the superstar rate. So it's not just in terms of the art, but it kind of pays to to just be patient and wait because you got you got locked in at the uh, the pre Thor rate. I'm not I'm not really even giving these uh, pieces their due. I'm sorry. I mean, you guys can just uh, rewind and watch later. Because this is this is an unbelievable Felipe Andrade show, and we're still only in the nine by twelves. We still got eleven by fourteens, eleven by seventeens to go. Crazy. I will say uh, on Felipe's art alone, it makes this unboxing show special. Who's this? Who is this? That of course is uh, Mobius's Arzak. This thing is amazing, and. I believe the person who is, who commissioned this is in the room. So congratulations. Congratulations, lucky collector. Uh, Nick Patera, I'm sure, as a, as a uh, Mobius head approves. That's very Mobi. Not only is that Arzac, but it's a very Mobius-y Arzac, too. Wow, super cool. Let's see. Are these inked? Yes, they are inked. Uh, you know, we originally were hoping to do this show last night, um, and again, because of my own schedule, we were not able to, and Felipe was hoping to join last night, um, but I wasn't able to do the show, so he's not here, but Felipe, if you, if you tune in later, uh, you're blowing us all away. I mean, just look at the crazy inking in this thing. Uh, you can't, you can, I mean, there's just no way for you guys to see. I mean, I do love opening these up with you guys. We get to enjoy all this together, but the truth of the matter is uh, you in the audience is not going to be, your, your experience is not going to be the same as me, you know, getting to hold this heart and look at it in person. Uh, we're doing the best we can. You just have to take my word for it. This inking is insane. I mean, like literally insane. Like this is like the work of a, of a madman. Uh, this, this request was, I think, some sort of transformation of Venom. And anyway... Felipe knocked it out of the park. Just each and every one of these. That's one thing I'm super proud of too with our guys is just the level of consistency. So we have uh, Nick Patera and Brian Sook in the room. And two artists in the room that, who sort of uphold our standard. But, you know, it's I know I, if I'm an artist, I'm looking at these like, oh, shit. Like, I got to I gotta do them up to, to this standard. Yeah, you do. That's so why we got the best commissions in the business. So that's why we always sell out these lists. All right, for you Marvel guys. Of course, Thor, the classic Thor. One more, nine by 12. No, two more, never mind. This is a Savage Land Road. See, I got a question from Justin Harper. This is likely a question for the podcast, but how does the expansion of artists work? Do you recruit up and coming talent? Artists approach you. 
Uh, Justin, it's been, uh, you know, it's, it's been an evolution. And uh, for the last uh, however many years, um, you know, we just, I, I, I really don't go out and recruit, but the word of mouth is, is, uh, is really, is really good. And I, I appreciate that. So it's mostly artists coming to me and, and we do have a waiting list. Um, I am unfortunately, you know, unable to bring on every single artist, but you know, the ones I do decide to work with and who decide to work with me and it's usually pretty special talents. And, uh, you know, Nick Patera is, uh, is patient zero. Uh, Ryan Sook was uh, last few years. So yeah, you can, you can ask Ryan. Ryan's a relative newcomer. Ryan's been with us for, for, uh, two and a half years. And that actually makes him still kind of new for, with us. Squirrel girl. I've kind of uh, made fun of this character in the past, and that's just because I'm a I'm a I'm a dumb old guy, like a boomer, I guess, or near boomer, and uh, very popular character. My my daughter actually gets a big kick out of this character, so yeah, I take back all the squirrel jo girl jokes I made before. One more, wow, lots, yes, cosmic ghost rider. I one of the mo most popular uh, new Marvel characters of the past 10, 20 years. It's it's crazy to me how this character is blown up. And those are all the nine by twelves. Let's move on, shall we? Moving on to eleven by fourteen again. Like it was really, the outer package was not particularly elegant, pretty ugly, but the inner packing is, I mean, this is like Japanese level packaging. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Japan, but they are like, they are like the kings of packing, like over packing, like excessive packing. Uh, but when it comes to art, not a bad thing. I definitely take it. All right, let's check out these 11 by 14 beauties. You can see this art is slightly bigger. And on top, it'll be. I'm real curious uh, what your favorite piece is out of all the ones we're going to show. It wouldn't surprise me if this one ranks high. Weapon X. And he does have a really nice signature, actually. Uh, once again, all of you who have won the prize this week, make sure you email me with your shipping address. Everyone who's won prizes from previous episodes, all your uh, prizes have gone out. So for this episode, again, please write me. Uh, even if you think I have your address, just... Write me with your address, helps me keep things organized. I think this is Battle Angel Alita. So yeah, we do get requests beyond Marvel and DC, big two. And his style is, uh, you know, fits manga and anime characters too. And this is a fitting one for this weekend. Batman and Catwoman. So uh, someone asked me what I thought of the Batman, the movie. And I will just say, I, I, I really like the casting. I thought, uh, I, like, I like Robert Pattinson's kind of creepy incel take on the character. Because Batman is a weirdo. Uh, and then uh, I thought the Catwoman, Zoe Kravitz, really good. I really liked her.
More Batman. All right, this guy asked for the works. He wanted Batman. I remember this, this request. He wanted Batman in the Batcave. And check that out. Felipe. That's Felipe's uh, Batman in Batcave. This is like the Felipe Andrade episode. I wish I could have split this up into like three packages for three episodes, but it's uh, it all came in this for this episode. So if you're a Felipe Andrade fan, this is gonna be your favorite episode. It is another manga character one I'm not familiar with. Katana. Maybe it's Psylocke. I'm not sure. Anyway. Oh, this one I actually... So, Felipe sent me some pictures. I shared this one on social media. This is great. Black Panther. Again, with the crazy-ass inking. More manga. I think this is My Hero Academia. But anyway, there you go. All right, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Felipe's most recent project was called The Many Deaths of Layla Star. And it was uh, just a massive, massive hit from Boom. Uh, easily the most highly acclaimed book of 2021. Um, Felipe has a very personal connection to it, which is why that art has not been available. Uh, but I do hope that uh, some of it will become available. If you haven't checked out the book yet, the trade is out. Uh, do check it out. Uh, people who read it just rave about it and love it. Hey, here's one for you and me, Ams. Oh, nice. One of our absolute favorites, Lone Wolf and Cub. Yep, 11 by 14s. I've had a lot of uh, manga requests for whatever reason. And our final 11 by 14 is Zatanna. You know, you probably have to zoom out a little bit because we're... Yeah, I just yeah. did. Cool. There we go. Uh, TC Patrol asks, do artists ever decline character requests? I can imagine subject matter could be an issue, but what about characters? Uh, DC Patrol, not often, but sometimes there are characters where... Um, an artist just does not know, and it's hard for them to get a handle on them. And uh, yeah, there, there there are occasions. It's it's not often. DC Patrol says that Satana is the best. DC Patrol votes for Satana. I don't know. It's gonna. It's hard. I mean, you know, we opened up the alumni by fourteens with, you know, Weapon X, Weapon X or Satana. I mean, flip a coin. Weapon X, Zatanna, or any of these. Flip a coin. Flip several coins. They're all winners. I mean, I'm not... I mean, this is like a... Uh, I'm, I'm glad we're doing like 30 of these things. Because I've always told everyone, since I'm the one who gets to see them all in person, just how remarkably high quality and just the consistency of the commissions from our guys. And now you really get a sense of that this time. These are all 11 by 17s. Now we're, now we're on to the big ones. Here's another one that's right after uh, my own heart. Clint Eastwood as the man with no name. And for those of you who also are into uh, one six figures, Sideshow just showed off their upcoming uh, 
man with no name figure, which looks really nice in the pictures. Um, I really haven't been in love with the Sideshow figures per se. I haven't gotten any in a while. They, they, they're a little off scale compared to the other ones. I Hopefully they've corrected that. Uh, but that's what I'm debating right now. Man with no name, one six figure is all time great. I think that's like, that looks like Magic Sword, but she's got dark hair. I'm not sure who this character is. Dark Magic. Huh? Dark Magic. Dark Magic. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Yams. Yeah, Yams knows. Dark Magic. Says Yams. We got Dark Magic. Oh, here we go. This is the Max and Julie. Sam Keith's Max, of course. This is... Uh, this is uh, sort of an offbeat one, and it's not not a character, uh, but one of uh, one of the collectors out there. He likes to get uh, commissions of an old man with a squid as personal meaning for him. It, it's a tribute to his uh, grandfather, and if you've been on the site and you've watched the site for a while, you would have seen uh, this theme uh, done by a different artist, uh, namely James Jean. Uh, James Jean did a giant painting of this theme uh, for the one commission li list we took for James way back when, like 2016, 2017. Um, I've quietly taken some commissions, helped out people with commissions since. I've not um, offered them because, uh, quite frankly, uh, they're just, you know, 99% of us are going to be priced out and there just really hasn't been a point. Um, I, I think I've talked about this before. James joined our site really just as a favor to me more than anything else. And I've kept him on the site because he looks good on the site. Um, so anyway, if anybody's out there uh, wants a commission, but just realize it's about the price of a very nice car, uh, you know, feel free to write me. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to hook you up. But this is uh, Felipe's uh, take on the same theme and it costs considerably less than a James Jean painting, and I bet the commissioner is going to be, still be very thrilled with this. Not sure who, who this is. Maybe Captain Marvel? Yeah, it might be Captain Marvel. I'm just going by the symbol. The chest. Uh, Felipe did a very celebrated run on Captain Marvel. As a matter of fact, before many deaths of Layla Star, that was probably the one thing most people knew him for. Um, that was the basis, that, that depiction of the character was the basis for the uh, MCU version. But he did it with Kelly Sue DeConnick. This is, uh, this is a biggie. Someone requested like uh, the entire X-Men team from this, this era were these particular characters. So you got all of them in the subway. And here we go. I believe, I may be mistaken, but I believe that this is a character from a self-published uh, web comic uh, that's created by a well-renowned collector and artist, um, but I will confirm that later. Um, I don't think he's watching now because uh, he's with his family and he couldn't get away. Um, but uh, yeah, I think he would be very happy with this. Okay. This might be my pick though, for at least amongst the 11 by 17s. Man with no name with this lettering incorporated into the poncho. Uh, what have you guys got to say? Yeah, so James Miller asked, these are really great. Will he be taking a new list this year? Again, James, I'm not 100% sure yet. I, I hope he does though. 
Uh, I'm supposed to be talking to him uh, within the next week or so. Grant Riddle, love that black bolt lock jaw. A lot of people like the black bolt lock jaw. Black Cat gets some love. Symbiote, yep, that crazy uh, Venom transformation. This is crazy, dude is a genius from uh, fellow genius Ryan Sook. Justin Harper says, the talent pool you have amassed is incredible. Kudos. Thank you, Justin. I pinch myself sometimes. It is, but this is a really special time. Um, you know, I think 20, 30 years from now, those of us who are still around are going to look back and go, wow, that was pretty nuts. All those guys under one brand banner. Ryan Sook says, I had no rep for 26 years. I looked around and asked many. Spoke with Felix, who I met at WonderCon a long time ago. Called him out of blue. And thankfully, yeah, believe me, no one was more thankful than me, Ryan. So, so it's, uh, it's our honor. DC Patrol says, it's great to see a real signature. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Nick Pater says, Parlo gets a lot of love from the Felix guy. Yeah, we're all big fans. Ian Saints says, haven't seen it yet, but keep hearing good things. I presume about the Batman movie. Batcave is a winner. Pencils are so fine. Uh, Ryan Sook, this is his favorite episode, and we only got a little bit of Sook. Okay, Zatanna is the best. Uh, Justin Harper says, don't ask DWD draw his character skinny tipping. That's right. Justin Harper knows. Justin Harper uh, pays attention. Nick Bertara says, I like when people have multiple options for us the most. Yeah, uh, Nick Bertara brings up a very good point. Um, if you want to get on a commission list, um, if you give artists like, you know, two or three or more options to pick from, that's always the best. You know, they, they will find something on the list that gets them most excited. They won't feel penned in necessarily. David Bloomer came in late to the party. Well, David, you know, good news is you get to watch later. Joe Darrow says, thanks for sharing Felipe's art. Incredible. Yeah, I agree, Joe. Padel, ooh, he just made it. Padel, you're going to want to, if you didn't see a uh, certain something, you're going to want to rewind. Uh, Skizway has to lock, log off. Skizway, thanks for hanging in this long. You're going to miss the last box. Did we save the best for last? There's no real order to this thing. But the last box is another biggie. Fragile, handle with care. This thing was professionally packed at a, at a FedEx store. DC Patrol guesses Riley Rosmo. Who else? Any more guesses? Ian McDonald, Pope, Stevens, Bertram, uh, DWJ, Richard Mountfort, you guessed correctly. This is Ian Bertram. Come on, guys, if it's big, only a couple of suspects, really. Uh, this, this, package is, this package is huge. Oh, boy. Hang on a second. I'm going to have to obscure Ian's address here. My address, no big deal. All right, so this is the top of the box. Which I'm going to open up. This is pretty straightforward. And Ian paid for the pros to do this, which is not a bad idea. It costs a little bit, but honestly, again, I think it's worth it. If, you know, you don't have a lot of experience packing, you're not quite sure what you're doing. Let the pros do it. Wow. Your favorite yams. Packing peanuts. <laughs> peanuts. Uh, try not to make a big mess here. Cool Looks like he impacted this. Well, maybe he didn't. I don't know. 
I think this 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 inner piece here, Ian packed, and he let the store put it in a box and surround it with peanuts. Yeah, that's my guess. Got it. Yep. giant piece of mason in here. So this is well packed anyway, even before he handed it off to the pros. This would have been okay. So yeah, no uh, outbreak disasters like last time, you know. And there hasn't been a real super disaster. I mean, the, you guys remember the last episode of the Marcia Takara from Brazil. You know, um, he's just not used to it. Don't blame the guy. That was probably the I don't know, at least well packed. You can see guys are getting better and better. They're, they're, getting, they're starting to get the clue. Oh, this is a kind of a thick pad of, of wall power. This is all 19 by 14. And uh, if you are on the newsletter, then you would have known we had a private art show on Zoom, invite only for a very select audience, not uh, recorded. So truly once in a lifetime experience. If you were there, you were there. And if you weren't, well, sorry, you didn't get to see it. But I think uh, anybody who was there got a legendary experience. And one they'll never forget. And one you can ask them about. All right, I know I, I, I know what this is though. That, that art we showed off in the art show was for Precious Metal. Um, this is not Precious Metal art. Precious Metal is his follow up to the Eisner Award winning Little Bird. And uh, he leveled up again on that art. Um, these are pieces he did because he was trying out some new tools uh, to work on precious metal. And uh, in doing so, he created some new art that we are making available to fans. This is a series of portraits. Full 19 by 24 uh, portraits of some of your favorite characters uh, in in, a in, in Ian's uh, inimitable singular style. These are all wall power. They will frame up very nicely on your wall. Uh, these are like uh, no other portraits you'll, you will get from anyone else in comics. 100% Ian Bertram genius. And we are planning to do a drop of uh, nothing but these portraits. That was Batman, of course. You gotta have Batman. And here's Thor. Another Batman, a uh, different take on it. We took uh, Ian's commission list back in 2020 as well, and it's gonna be a long time before he actually completes it, uh, just because precious metal is taking up so much of his time. So if you're on that list, uh, you don't wanna wait, uh, you feel free to write me and, and uh, we're happy to give you a full refund. Everyone who's still waiting, obviously thank you for your patience, but as usual, I believe the wait will be worth it. Um, so this will be your only chance to get I mean, look at that. You know, any art like this from Ian, because he's not doing commissions. He's not gonna be doing commissions for a long time. Uh, the existing commission list is probably the last one he's gonna be taking for a long time. I mean, look, look how awesome that is. Three, uh, yet another Batman and yet another take. I mean, does not repeat himself that boy, that's for sure. Not really go wrong with Batman. I'm not sure what this is. I think this may be Tetsuo. Ian is a uh, big fan, of course. No, I take that back. Holy crap. I'm not sure. Maybe that's that's like a really beat up Wonder Woman. I'll find out from Ian. Joker. DC Patrol says, I'm not a Venom guy, but that rules. Yeah, DC Patrol is, 
clearly favors DC, and even DC Patrol appreciates a well-drawn Venom, a well-conceived Venom. Another Batman. Ian was in a Batman mood, which uh, is great. You cannot go wrong with Batman. Oh, I think this is Martian Manhunter. That's cool. Is the big eye a new signature? I guess this, this, uh, yeah, I think it is. Oof, Batman again, I think it's half Batman. Well, if you are a Batman fan and you like Ian's work, uh, your chance is coming right up and you'll have, you have many chances. There's not just one Batman for all of you to fight over. You're gonna have your pick. And here's Wolverine. Fabrice, Fabrice Strune, these are so good. And Fabrice is a museum curator, fine art galleries. He would know, we got Poison Ivy here. That's really something coming from Fabrice. Hey, great having you in the room, Fabrice. Look how big these things are. Imagine these things, just again, frame it up, hang it on your wall. Instant uh, conversation piece. Another Joker. Uh, Richard Montfort, when does this go on sale? These are, it's gonna be a couple weeks at least, Richard, because we gotta get all these scanned. And these giant 19 by 24 ones, it's not just running it through once. We gotta scan these in like, in, in chunks, about six pieces, and then piece it all together. Very time consuming. Uh, thank you, thank you, Yams, for, for doing all that hard work. Uh, and it takes a while to get that done. So you can see there are a lot of pieces here. So, uh, but if you're on the newsletter, we'll let you all know. Hulk. Oh man, we've had Thor, we've had Wolverine, we've had Venom, we've had Hulk. So yeah, we got uh, Marvel and DC in here. And Daredevil. Marvel making a comeback in here. Man, if it wasn't uh, for that giant Felipe Andrade box, uh, it'd probably be, it'd be, it'd be the Ian Bertrand episode. All right, Catwoman, back to DC. Again, good timing. Thanos. Wow. I don't know what got into uh, what got into Ian, but he went nuts. And finally, I guess it's fitting that we end with Batman. Started with Batman, end with Batman. A lot of Batman in this drop, guys. Coming up. Uh, what have you guys got to say? I don't think I've seen a Bertram unboxing from DC Patrol. We've had uh, Ian stuff on this show before, but not this much at once before. A lot of excitement for Precious Metal. Yep, uh, again, if you were part of that private uh, art show on Zoom, uh, you know, you, you got to see something truly special, really blown away. And, you know, we just have some just amazing comics coming. I mean, forget the original art. I just can't wait to read these things. Victor Bracamonte says, that was fun and amazing. I think Victor was there. Dakota Crow says, Precious Metal will be a top book of the year for sure. I agree, Dakota. David Bloomer says, best be a Popeye in there. Sorry, David Bloomer, no Popeye. I didn't know you were a Popeye fan. Nick Patera says, Bertram is so damn good uh, from one artist to another. It's always uh, saying something when an artist appreciates another artist's work. Okay. 
We got a new person in the room, Hancock Lee. How you doing? Thanks for coming in. Justin Harper says, Ian's growth over the past few years has been incredible to watch. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when we started repping him, it was back in 2015, 2016, around then. He had done some work for DC. It's funny enough, some of his earliest work was on, on Batman books. And then he did uh, Precious Metal. I'm not sorry, Precious Metal. Um, House of Penance, which got nominated for a top prize at Angoulême. One of the rare uh, American projects to get nominated, and it's just been off to the races for him. Then I mean, and Little Bird was was yet uh, you know level up again, and that one uh, won him an Eisner. I think you know Precious Metal is going to be the biggest one yet. Um, so if you are an Ian Bertram fan, though, uh, yeah, you get to get something like this coming up real soon. Time we have three thirty-two, so we we're about an hour and a half, and I like to keep these things to an hour and a half. So uh, I I've, I've got some some private art to show. Uh, we had eight boxes last time and didn't have time to show off the private art. Um, this week though, I'm going to make up for it. Uh, it's been a I guess it's been a popular part of the show. Cause, you know, I know the other art shows are uh, doing that too, showing off art that is not on calf. And I, I don't do this to sort of encourage people not to share art on CAF. It just so happens that this is art that I just haven't gone around to share on CAF or, or have examples and it's kind of redundant. Uh, but I wanted to show you something first. I got this package and I, I had to, I've already opened this up. This came from a fellow collector who said, hey Felix, I got something I wanna send you. And I said, okay, sure, thanks. And you know, people send me things, you know, people who aren't necessarily collectors who but who know me from the podcast or this show and are very, very kind and, and want to send me something out of appreciation, which is really nice. You guys certainly don't have to do that. Do that. Uh, but this is from collector Wick, Rick Welch. And he just said, I found something uh, when I was uh, going through my stuff and I thought you should have it. And and this is what it is. I mean, this guy, this came in a padded envelope, so it's, you're not really missing anything. Uh, but this is what he sent me. An original... Uh, you know, Rocketeer shirt from Graffiti from way back in the day, and it's still sealed in the bag. Uh, this is a size medium, so I can't wear it, uh, but this is uh, a piece I own. I plan on keeping the bag, keeping keep it nice and minty. Uh, Rick is a fan of a lot of the same comics I'm a fan of because we are of that same, you know, 80s era, so he's, he's around my age. And back then, you know, Graffiti started coming out with these shirts, and I got all the ones that I loved. I, noticed, I mean, if you're around my age, you probably remember him. There was Watchmen, there was Dark Knight Returns, there was that Mage, uh, which looked like Kevin Matchstick shirt with a Thunderbolt. Um, what else? There was a John Sable shirt. There were like three different Rocketeer shirts, and I had them all. Uh, the first one was uh, Rocketeer on the rooftop with his Mauser out. The second one was Rocketeer with Betty slung over his shoulder, and then later on there was this one. I, I wore them all, to, you know, till they were threadbare. Um, yeah, so it's really cool to to see this again. Brought back a lot of memories, and I especially appreciate it since uh, I have the original art to that. And Rick writes me a note. Uh, Felix just found this shirt going through some of my stuff, and thought you should have it. Enjoy, Rick. Rick, thank you very very much. Um, very touched by this, and appreciate it. So, want to give a shout out to Rick. Okay, so. Uh I'm going to show you some more from my collection now. Part that you have not seen before. Actually, one piece you have that sort of fits the theme. So let's see what uh, we got going here. Anybody guess what that is? You don't get a, you get a no prize if you get this right. Uh, Justin Harper says, "Fun." I outgrew my rocket T-shirt and hung that thing on the wall like a poster. Yeah, those 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 T-shirts were like little works of art, and they were very well loved. Uh, any guesses? No? Well, maybe I'll just show you. We'll skip the suspense. It is. Shaheen guesses a killing joke for Peter Page. Rude. Nope. It is uh, actually Tony Moore. Walking Dead. Uh, may be the most important comic, I think, of the last 30 years. I mean, there's certain books that have uh, really changed the game. And uh, this isn't necessarily that in terms of 
comics and comic storytelling, but I think it really did help save the industry. I've heard anecdotally that the Walking Dead trades, you know, kept uh, Diamond afloat. And I know a lot of people were, you know, discovered uh, comics through Walking Dead, the TV show. So Walking Dead is just a huge, huge book uh, by, by Robert Kirkman. Uh, did it save the industry? Very well could have. And this is a page from issue one uh, of Rick in the hospital who wakes up from his coma and he encounters a, uh, a zombie for the first time. Actually, just a, it's a chorus, but that, that corpse is going to become uh, animated, I believe, pretty soon. Uh, this is, uh, ish, let's see, issue one, page five. Um, I did not get this directly from Tony Moore, nor did I get this uh, early on when it was when it would have been, you know, relatively cheap. I got this later. I can't remember if the show had come out yet or not. It might not have. Uh, but I was a huge fan of Walking Dead, the comic. I got Walking Dead number one off the stands. Just why not? You know, it was there. Wanted to try it out. And pretty soon it was like a top of the pile read. Whenever there was a Walking Dead out um, on any given week, that would have been my first read. And uh, a lot of my, you know, comics reading friends were similarly hooked. And again, this is before the TV show. I actually bought this um, from another collector who uh, was introduced to me by uh, Steve Wyatt. Um, if you are a, um, you know, if you're a fan or a collector and you live in California, especially, you'll you'll know Steve Wyatt. He uh, or you know he's been a convention organizer, but he's also like a longtime comic book dealer. Uh, he's been going to San Diego for like 40 years set up. He's always got a giant booth set up. And he travels the country and more than that he is also an art framer and he's sort of a framer for the biggest collectors in the hobby i'm talking guys like you know dave mandel and eric roberts and jim reed and albert i mean albert lives in new york and albert has steve do his framing for him but anyway uh steve introduced me to this guy um i think the guy just uh you know needed some money quick and this thing was not cheap at the time i mean it was had to be one of the most expensive modern art pages to sell at the time, but it was from issue one. And yes, I am a, I am a comic book fan. I am a sucker for early art, issue one art, and I hadn't seen any other pages from issue one, uh, so I bit the bullet. I got this, and I've had it ever since, and and no regrets. All right, let's take a look at uh, what uh, the second piece of art is. Any guesses? Well, I will uh, spare you the suspense, but if you've watched these unboxing shows, you know I usually like to follow a theme. So my second piece is another Walking Dead page. This one by Charlie Adler, who did the bulk of the series. Uh, I know fans and art collectors tend to value Tony Moore's art uh, higher. Um, I think part of that is due to uh, the scarcity of it. He only did but like uh, interiors for about seven, eight issues, and the rest were done by Charlie Adler. Uh, but I appreciate Charlie a lot. I think he was a really excellent fit for the story for this series. And this is uh, page five from issue 19. And issue 19 is the issue that introduces Michonne, fan favorite character Michonne. So this is from the first appearance issue of Michonne. This isn't actually her, technically her very, very first appearance. That's on the previous page, which is owned by a friend of mine. Um, so where did this page show up? Uh, this page actually showed up on eBay. And uh, my friend and I were both really hot after these pages. And we decided not to fight each other on it. We would just key in on one page. Um, you know, I actually wanted this page more because you got the little action shot at the top. with Michonne doing what she does with her katana and uh, walking with her two pets. I believe they refer to them as... Um, he has the page where she first shows up. It's just a little more static, not as actiony. Anyway, we both got what we wanted. Uh, we paid a hefty, hefty price on eBay. There was a lot more competition at that time. And a little bit of trivia. Um, you know, once upon a time, uh, I was an owner of ice cream franchises, Cold Stone Creamery. And the guy who sold these pages was the VP of uh, the franchise. Uh, he's a comic book fan himself. And he got these pages... Uh, I believe from Charlie, uh, probably from Charlie's rep, who would have been, which is Splash Page at San Diego when this issue had come out. 
And many years later, he decided to part with them on eBay. And uh, Small World, he remembered who I was. I remember who he was. We said hello. Um, and I got this page. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a big Walking Dead fan. And so the last page, last piece is one you've seen because it's, it's been in my gallery. This is my representative Walking Dead uh, piece. It is the uh, cover to the compendium, which collects the first 48 issues, which I think for many fans is sort of, you know, peak Walking Dead. Uh, I loved, I mean, I, I read the thing all the way to the end. And I sort of understand some of the criticisms, you know, maybe got a little... There was a little repetition, and it and it really did get it could, it could be very very depressing at times. But the first forty issues, especially, uh, were just absolutely riveting. And uh, I believe uh, Robert Kirkman told me that this told me that this is the the best selling Walking Dead publication of all time was the Compendium. I mean, they sold that thing at Barnes and Noble. You can even get it at Costco at one point. Um, so this is actually the the other two pieces. The tone was signed by Tony Moore. The second was signed by Charlie Adler. This one's signed by Robert Kirkman. Uh, I took this piece to an image expo. The very first image expo, I think, was 2011 or so. And Robert Kirkman was there. I had him sign this piece. And uh, I think I was the only person in line who had art. So when I gave this to him to sign, he actually looked at this for a long time. And he said, uh, where'd you get this? Uh, how much you pay for it? And he just had a lot of questions about this, about this art. Um, which was funny to me um, because clearly he, it was sort of not, um, you know, something that was a huge priority for him to be buying this original art and all that early art. You know, we all know that, you know, hit the market is, was out there and, you know, he didn't get any of it. So I don't know if, if uh, showing this to him sort of lit a spark um, because as I understand, he's gotten some Walking Dead art since. Um, if you listen to the podcast, Robert was kind enough to do the podcast. He's been a guest before. And obviously he was aware of art and even bought art uh, prior to me showing this, this. So I'm not taking credit for him being an art collector. But it was interesting that, um, you know, it, it, what, I mean, you know, he was too busy with Walking Dead property. He really wasn't uh, into collecting. He had to get more important things to do at this time. But maybe this, is, maybe this reinvigorated that uh, passion. Uh, because uh, you know, he's talked about uh, the fact that uh, he's, he's way into comic art again. Okay. Uh, Ron Lim says, I was at that Image Expo, Oakland. The TV cast was there too. Ron Lim, that was, that was the Image Expo, the very first one at Oakland, um, at the Hyatt, the, where uh, WonderCon used to be held. All right, so that's it for today's show. But as you know, uh, we're not done with the prizes yet. I've been giving away a prize, uh, making a prize available for everyone. You do not have to guess. If you've been in the chat and you have uh, made a comment, Yams has made a note of it. He's added you to the list that we will be uh, submitting to the randomizer. And you got a chance to win a piece of original art. Yes, an actual piece of original art. Okay, so what it is is this little Batman head. But this seems fitting for this weekend. Everyone's crazy into Batman. And uh, this is a Batman print by Ryan Souk, who uh, happens to be in the audience. Uh, and you get to win this. this. He made a limited edition print, 50, uh, all signed with a little Batman head on it. And what did I say? I say, say Ryan Souk should do the new style guide. Let me check out his Batman. Very classy, very classic. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes simple. Is the best base. This is your 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 your. This is Batman, and you get to get a chance to win this, and it comes with a little little piece of original art. How cool is that? Just for tuning into the show. Tom teaches is funny. If Ryan wins, it would be funny. And if Ryan wins, I'm just, I'm sending this back to him. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go, let's go. We uh, we open up six boxes, so we're going to spin the wheel. Six times, everyone's in there. Spin number one. Jersey Lambo. Jersey Lambo is your first loser. Spin number two.
Richard Malfort. So close. Spin number three. Jason Kim. Spin number four, Ian Saint. Okay, spin number five. The most painful one of them all. Who's it gonna be? The Mighty Dom Uga, so close, Mighty Dom Uga. I'm sorry, but here we go. Six spin for the winner of the limited edition Ryan Sook print with art is Kelsey Steen. Yay, congratulations, Kelsey. Aren't you glad you tuned in? Everyone else, thanks so much for spending Sunday afternoon with me. Uh, if this time works better for people, maybe we'll do this time in the future. I don't know. Uh, I personally like the weekend evenings work a little better for me. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's another show. Episode 14, done. In the books. It's a wrap. Uh, episode 15 is going to be a little while. Probably not for another, I don't know, at least another month. For no, First thing is, I'm not sure how much more art we're going to be getting. In the meantime, second thing is, uh, my schedule is packed. Like every... My, 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 my daughter has it all mapped out, so it doesn't look like I'm going to have much time to do this. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, please hit that like button. Uh, help spread the word. Let's build this channel up. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, we got a lot of great art coming up that will be dropped. And you guys got a preview of it. So, yeah, that's it. I'm hungry. I'm going to get some meat. Thanks, Yams. Thanks, right, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye, guys.